Hi, it's Whitney, aka Shapespeare, and welcome to Blender Basics for 3D Printing Part 3. Today we're talking about Boolean modifiers. Now, a Boolean modifier is a very important thing to know when you're 3D printing, when you're preparing an object to be printed. In this case, we have a combination of a cube and a sphere. We have them overlapping like this, and if this is the object we want to print, um, if we sent this off to a slicer, there's no telling what we'd get because different slicers uh, deal with overlapping meshes in different ways. Um, the proper way to combine these and guarantee that they'll produce the result that we want to is to do a Boolean operation to combine them. Luckily, it's pretty easy to do in Blender. So, we go over to this panel here and we select the little wrench, which gives us the modifier menu. We select either one of our objects. In this case, we're going to start with having our cube selected. We're going to add modifier in the generate menu here. We're going to say Boolean. Okay. Now, a Boolean is basically a math equation. You're adding or subtracting objects from each other. In this case, we're starting with the cube, and there's three different operations we have a choice of. We can do a Boolean difference, a union, or an intersect. We're going to start with a union because it's easiest to understand. A union says take A, which in this case is the cube, plus B. Okay, we're adding A to B. We're adding the cube to the sphere. This is what we would expect the output to look like. So in this case, when I do Booleans, I like to turn off the object that I'm Boolean in into it. So I go up here to the outliner view, and I click on its little eyeball, and make it disappear. Okay, That way when I actually do my Boolean, I can see what the effect is on my cube, rather than having the sphere there as well, and you can't see if you've actually done anything. Okay, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So we select our operation as union, and we select the object that we're going to apply our first object is a cube. We're going to do a union of the cube and the sphere, which is down here. Select that, and here we have the cube and the sphere. That's exactly what we'd expect for the union. Now, if we still had the sphere turned on, you can see you get this sort of little bit of sort of fuzziness in the image, which is because you have two coincident objects, two objects that are occupying the exact same space but there's rounding errors and such in their position, so you get this little bit of garbage in the display, which lets you know that it actually worked. But it's better if you hide the object that you're booleaning into, and that way you can actually see the result of your, of your boolean, okay? Now, the other operations that we can do, so union is A plus B, difference is A minus B. So it says take everything that is part of object A and subtract object B from it. So remove every place they overlap and that's what you get for a difference modifier. Now of course the other way you can com combine two numbers, right? You have A plus B, in this case A minus B. The other way to do it is B minus A, which is called an intersect. And in this case we're saying give us everything that every part of the cube, which is also intersecting with the sphere. So sometimes you have to cycle through them to figure out exactly which one you want. Uh, in this case, we're going to stick with the union for now. Now, this is a modifier in Blender, and the neat thing about modifiers is that until you apply them, you can um, play with them and you don't have to commit to changing that. So we can, for instance, reposition the objects relative to each other. Okay? So it doesn't look so impressive on a union. If we do it on a difference, we can get some pretty cool effects. This is kind of fun for animations too sometimes. Okay? So you can you can change things as it's rendering your boolean. Now, in practicality, uh, these are very, very small meshes, very simple objects that we're dealing with, and it's rendering them in real time, quite, quite snappy and and uh, instantaneous. 
if you find yourself working with very large meshes, um, I routinely work with meshes that have uh, a million vertices in them. Um, it takes several seconds or the, even the better part of a minute on my machine, which is a relatively fast uh, i7 quad core. Uh, it takes a, a fairly long time um, to calculate a Boolean like that. So you don't want to be moving things around like that because every little fraction of an inch you move that, it has to recalculate the Boolean. And if it takes a couple of seconds each time, then you'll be sitting here wondering why your computer seems to have hung, <laughs> why, why Blender seems to have crashed. It probably hasn't crashed, it's just trying to keep up with, with your requests for it to recalculate Booleans. So knowing how to apply a Boolean is a very useful thing. Basically, once you're happy with, with what you have here, you click Apply, and it actually renders the mesh. It has produces you know does all the calculations so that your object is now this is a final mesh there's no longer a modifier in place here you can't go back and make different choices about that modifier um, but this object now is is you know locked in um, but you're no longer having to recalculate the modifier so you know if you are you know you can swing the object around you can go into edit mode and see all the vertices. Um, you can modify the vertices. Uh, this is now burned into this mesh. It's, it's you know, a fully formed mesh that contains the output of your modifier. Okay, let's uh, see control Z and back out of that. So we haven't backed to the point where we haven't applied the modifier yet. Um, so remember, if you're dealing with very large mesh, be sure to apply your modifiers. Um, if you don't remember to apply your modifiers, you'll notice up here in the outliner view, there's a little wrench that appears next to the object that you just applied the modifier to. Um, if you see that little wrench up there, and it can happen if you're working on a one small part of a project and you end up leaving a modifier open like this and go off and work on something else and then come back and you know if you happen to pick this object up and move it a little bit it has to recalculate that modifier and that can take a horrendous long time if it's a large object so just always be aware um, commit your modifiers apply them as soon as you're sure that that's what you want um, because leaving them open can can get you into trouble okay so we're going to apply this and now we have an object that if we sent this to a slicer it would produce exactly this uh, if we go into uh, edit mode we can see what our mesh looks like our mesh looks exactly like we would expect it to um, it is the combination of those two objects combined into one, if we send it into a slicer, it would slice perfectly because that is what, you know, that's what slicers do. It's a very well-formed mesh at this point. It would be obviously a problem to 3D print because it doesn't have a flat base. At least to do it on an extruder machine would require some modifications. But anyways, so that is sort of when modifiers, uh, when Boolean modifiers work well. Now I'll show you what happens um, with some of the things that can go wrong with them. Now, sometimes you may notice funny things happening when you go to do your, your Booleans. In this case, we've got our cube. I turned it green just so we can see we're dealing with something else here. We're gonna take our cube. We're gonna add a union modifier between our cube and our sphere, just like we did before. And we're going to turn off our sphere so we can see the result. And what's this? That's something odd. Our cube is booleaning perfectly around the sides. And then, hmm, the top face of it is hollow. So how did that happen? What's going on? You will often, if you're dealing with a mesh, for instance, that you've pulled off the thingiverse, um, you may find some odd things going on like this. And I'll show you most of the time what's happening has to do with what's called your normals. Okay, so let's just back out of that for now so we're not 
so we can see clearly what's going on here. Let's look at the cube for a moment. We're going to go into edit mode. Now every face on the cube, in fact every face on every object, that is to say every polygon that makes up any of your objects, has what are called normals. Now the normals basically tell the computer which side of your face is inside and which side of your face is outside. Okay. If you go to the mesh display menu here, which is um, sort of, this is your regular transform menu when you're in the edit mode, and you scroll down through all of these things, you find mesh display, and you find this little section here that says normals. There's corner normals or vertex normals, and there's face normals. In this case, we're interested in face normals. Click that and it will display your face normals. You get these sort of little bristles sticking out of it. You can control how long they are to make them easy to see. So if we pan around our object here, you can see every face has its normal sticking out, okay? And that tells us that the normal faces in the direction, it points in the direction, it points, if you wanna be technical, it points normal to the surface, that means perpendicular to the surface in two directions. So it's perpendicular this way and perpendicular that way. And it's so it's pointing straight out from the surface in the positive direction, that is to say in the outside direction. Now the thing to remember, of course, is we're talking about Boolean, so we're talking about doing math problems here. So all of these will go into our math equation as plus one. But look at the top. What do you notice? It doesn't seem to have a normal. Actually, it does have a normal. Every face has a normal. Its normal is just inside the cube. Its normal is inverted. Now that happens um, sometimes just accidentally. Sometimes if you pull down a mesh that somebody has done a lot of work on, adding a lot of different things to and modifying a lot, um, it sort of happens inadvertently. You get messed up normals. Sometimes when you do booleans, you're, it messes up your normals. So it's something to be aware of. Really easy to fix, okay? You don't even really have to turn on your, your normal view and, you know, look for inverted normals. The easiest thing to do is to just come over here and click where it says normals. Click recalculate. And recalculate sets all of the normals pointing to the outside of the object, to the extent that the program can tell where they should be. It's pretty good at that, though. So you notice it fixed our top normal. Now we can just take a quick scan around and see, and all of our normals are normal. They're all pointing outside. That means that every one of these faces will evaluate as a 1, as a positive 1, when we put it into our Boolean. So we will go out of edit mode into object mode. Now we've still got our sphere there, right? We're gonna keep it hidden just so we can see. Uh, we're gonna apply our modifier, apply a union on the sphere, and it's fixed. That's what we expect, right? That's what we would expect a difference or an intersection to look like, okay? If you have messed up normals and you do a Boolean operation on it, it will produce an object which you cannot print, or at least you're very unlikely to be able to print it because it will not be a solid. All right, let's look at that again. If we go into our cube, we'll, we'll go, um, we'll select the top face again. And if we go to the normals menu over here and we say flip direction, which is not something you'd ordinarily want to do, but we're gonna do it for this example. So now we have our inverted normal on the top face again. Go back to object mode, and let's say, let's do a difference with the sphere, okay? So if you look at this, that is not a solid object. It's just a surface. Um, and usually inverted normals, if you have an, an inverted normal in your object, um, and you do a Boolean on it, it will usually produce a surface like this as its output, which is not printable, um, or at least not usually printable. Um, you generally are looking to create a solid. In this case, you have, you can see there's no thickness to this object, 
So most slicers would not be able to handle this. They would not give you a, a useful output. Which brings me to the point of why it's very important to preview things uh, after you put them through your slicer before you try and print them. I recommend using a slicer that has a really good preview mode on it. I use Simplify 3D. I think it's the best one going right now, um, but you do have to pay for it. Um, but even if you're using something like MakerWare, please use the preview because if you try and run something like this through the slicer, it's going to produce garbage. But look at the preview closely and you can see that it's garbage before you try and print it. Because if you don't and you just say print, you know, an hour later you'll be looking at something kind of funny pile of wasted filament that uh, doesn't look anything at all like what you thought you were printing. So I s recommend that you always preview before you print. So just to show you a quick example of uh, using a Boolean in action, uh, this is a scan from the Smithsonian of Amelia Earhart's flight suit. And this is a scan of one of my daughters. And we can combine the two of them and make her wear Amelia Earhart's flight suit. And then she can be a great aviatrix herself. So thanks for joining me. Um, we'll be back uh, soon with uh, more things you can do with Booleans, um, some of the ins and outs of using Booleans specifically for 3D printing.